Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Connected Midweek Online, these Thursday night uh, opportunities to connect with you, to uh, spend time in the Word of God along with our connected team and family, some intimate time in the Word of God. And of course, you can get all of our messages online on uh, YouTube. Obviously, you're looking at this on YouTube if you're, if you're hearing us tonight. We call it Messages on Demand, and uh, you can get this 30-minute midweek uh, every week, and then daily, our daily connection is about seven, 10 minutes uh, in the Word of God uh, each morning, and then on Sundays, we have an, a Bible study that's an hour or so uh, in the Word of God in a time of fellowship, and so we're excited about it and the opportunity to connect with you. My wife Ramona is here tonight. As always, I'm lead pastor of Connected Church, and she is the administrative pastor. And uh, we're going to spend some time in the Word tonight. Nate, anything you want to say to the people tonight? No, hello, welcome. All right, all right. Well, hey, listen. Uh, so we're going to start off in Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven tonight, as we continue to look into the Word of God to understand. Uh, how we are made and God's intent and purpose in our design. And uh, we ourselves walking in this discernment of uh, how we are made and why we are made, that we might be uh, effective in our everyday life and walk. And effectiveness being defined by fulfilling and walking out and operating in our God-made design, authority, gifting, and uh, being a difference that makes a difference in this world. All right, going over to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, let's just take a minute to pray. Father, as always, we honor you and reverence you. We know that it's you who made us and not we ourselves. You made us in your image and likeness, defining our life and existence for all time and eternity. Tonight, as we give attention to your word, we thank you that it prosper in everything you sent it to do that will accomplish everything that you please. And it's alive and powerful, gives us discernment and direction and uh, leads us in the way that we should go. We thank you also, Father, that uh, it is transformative and you confirm your word in, uh, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, 2 Timothy chapter one and verse seven, we've been talking in these Thursday night lessons uh, for several weeks now about uh, discernment and uh, operating and walking in discernment. And uh, a part of uh, that is knowing how we're made and how we have been crafted by God and the nature of uh, the spirit that is within us. And so here in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Reading from the King James Version of the text, it says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, uh, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Or uh, in uh, other translations, uh, uh, say power, uh, love, and discernment. And so uh, it is uh, everything is defined by the essence of what's in it. Uh, when God created all things, he created it after its kind with its seed in itself. Uh, we taught a lengthy message a couple months ago on uh, seed and uh, how God is a seed-minded God. Mm -hmm. And so when Paul encourages the young man, Timothy, to understand that he has been given uh, not a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, I believe that his intent is for uh, him to understand his design and 
to operate with boldness and courage with what he has been gifted by God with and what has been invested in him. In fact, having read the principal text, let's expand it and let's read the context of the text of the of the encouragement. Um, I'll, I'm going to start reading at the first verse of 2 Timothy 1. This is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God our, the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. And uh, he, he was uh, at great confidence in uh, Timothy, and uh, often he would leave Timothy in charge of uh, the works wherever he went, he would send Timothy. At one point in the book of Philippians, he says, uh, I will send Timothy to you shortly because I have no man who is like-minded who has my spirit. But he said, I will send Timothy to you. And so Timothy was someone who Paul had poured into and he saw uh, a great uh, uh, potential and giftings in. And so he began to talk to him like a father. Uh, the apostle Paul at one point uh, says that there be not many fathers. And uh, he was talking about the need for uh, those at his day uh, to stand up and to be able to see the potential in others and to lead by example and to be nurturers and those who will impart uh, and see giftings in, in those around them and be willing to mentor and disciple. Uh, that's one thing that's so awesome about our session Monday night uh, and, uh, you know, real fathers, right? Uh, not just fathers in terms of uh, birth fathers, but being fathers. And so Paul had this attitude and mentality towards Tim, Timothy. Uh, and he addressed him in such a way when I was a very young man and I began studying the word as I began to understand Paul's letter and Paul's life better and better. I initially in reading actually had concluded that he was his son, but it took me a while to study and to understand that he was not his natural born son, but that when he spoke of him, it was an endearment uh, that he saw in uh, mentoring and, uh, and uh, empowering uh, him. And so he says, I thank my God, I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing, I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day, man. That's, uh, that's awesome, uh, showing us uh, the power of uh, our uh, love for and being uh, mentors and stewards of the grace and wisdom of God that has invested in us and gifts of God in us and to see that in others and to, to pray for them. He said, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears that I might be filled with joy. And so he is very acquainted with uh, the young man and the challenges that he is facing, uh, the things that he's dealing with. If you read through the letters to Timothy, there were naysayers. Those were obviously those who despised his youth and looked at him uh, as being too youthful. Uh, you know, you know how flesh and blood is, right? Um, and so uh, he met with many confrontations. He met with heresies. Uh, he, Paul at one point had to tell him to, uh, uh, to certain men who uh, were blasphemers, and, uh, and he had to, to, to speak to him and talk about discipline. And so he, he dealt with a lot. And so obviously, uh, he shared often with Paul, and Paul says, I'm mindful of your tears. And so one thing that uh, is... is, is uh, uh, is for us to see here is that Timothy in the great work that he did, he nevertheless was human. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
uh, he dealt with, with many, many things. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people conclude that uh, because you anoint it, you're superhuman, mm -hmm. that you don't experience uh, uh, the same things that others experience. But it is good to see the text uh, share with us the nature of uh, the humanity, uh, even of those who are anointed and gifted and called and fulfilling great things. Why is that encouragement? Because it says to us that uh, God can work and use any of us. And he invests his treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of him and uh, not of us. And so then uh, part of our discernment is to understand this, that the excellence of the power is of God. Uh, and so I don't have to dissociate with my humanity. In fact, it is my humanity that allows me to operate compassion and to see others. And uh, no doubt, Paul, even in 2 Corinthians 4, how he called himself, he says, I'm perplexed, but uh, I'm not in despair. He said, I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. And so he too dealt with those things and uh, he uh, uh, walked those things out. And so he was able to pass on and encourage this young man uh, with it. I hear the James, the, uh, the elder, uh, saying to us in James chapter five, as he encourages us to pray and how the prayers of the righteous avail much to release tremendous power that is dynamic in his working. He tells us that Elijah, a man who's subject to like passions as we are, he prayed and his reign not on the earth for the space of three and a half years. And so he tells us this, that we might be mindful of the gift of God in us and the relationship that we have with our Father God and the power and the exceeding greatness of the power that works in us, that the excellence of it again is not of us, but is of God. And when we are aware of that, we can be very courageous and very bold. We can take initiative, as Brother Danny often talks about uh, with men of integrity, you know, men taking initiative. And so we can take initiative when we know uh, that the excellence of the power is of God, that God himself is working in us. Philippians chapter two and verse 13, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, he goes on to say, uh, uh, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned or unpretended faith that is in you, which was in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is in you also. So he says, you have a legacy of faith and you have been taught well and you've seen faith. It, uh, you've seen the faith uh, in your grandmother Lois and you've seen the faith in your mother Eunice. And uh, uh, it's good to have examples of faith. Uh, it's good to have, uh, to, to look at and be aware uh, of, of the faith uh, that you see in, in those around you. In fact, the Bible teaches us in Hebrews chapter six that we should be followers of those who through faith and impatience inherit the promise. Be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And so he calls to remembrance and he uh, says to Timothy, remember these, that what you have personally seen and saw. But then he says, wherefore I put your remembrance now that you stir up the gift of God, which is in you by the putting on of my hands. In other words, he said, I've laid hands on you. I've imparted into you. Uh, that which God showed me about you, and I spoke it over you, and I laid hands on you. Another place he said, don't neglect the gift that was laid on uh, of God that was uh, given to you by the laying down of the hands of the presbyter. Obviously, the elders had laid hands on Timothy to confirm uh, the gift of God that was in him. And so he is encouraging him. And I think as he's encouraging Timothy, he is also encouraging us. And so we come to then this verse seven, where he says, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 
Now, let's, let's, let's unpack that again in a couple of different translations. Let's look at it. Uh, one translation says uh, in the Amplified text, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Another translation says that God has not given us the spirit of timidity and cringing fear. You know, I say this from time to time, you've heard me say it, but the things in the kingdom of God operate with boldness. It is important to have boldness and be courageous when you are operating in kingdom principles and truth and kingdom, kingdom authority, you must have the audacity to just believe what God said and do what he said and, and, and to even project uh, the authority of what he has invested in you, much like Joshua did when he was in the battle. And I, I won't say it's around the 12th chapter of Joshua, maybe. Uh, where he was in a great battle. And uh, as he was in the battle, uh, uh, the battle had raged all day and uh, the sun was beginning to go down and, and Joshua looked up in the sky and told the sun to stand still, to stay where you are because I have a mandate uh, from God. And uh, for that mandate, I need you to cooperate and stay where you are while I fulfill what uh, the creator of both you and I uh, has, has, has told me would be so. And so the son obeyed him. The son didn't argue with him. And so uh, what, what basis did he have to command the son to stand still? Uh, uh, you read Joshua 1, God told him, fear not. He said it several times. He says, be strong and very courageous over and over again, he, 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 he tells them, don't be fearful, be courageous, be strong and of a good courage. And so uh, he had something he had to walk out. And so then, because we have been vested and invested by God with an assignment in the earth uh, and in this world, he has deposited within us a spirit a spirit that Paul describes to have a threefold nature. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit that specifically called out these attributes, a spirit of power, spirit of love, and a spirit of a sound mind. Well, uh, you know, we just taught a series on power, didn't exhaust it. But one thing about, uh, again, about power, uh, when you know you have power, uh, you, you are courageous. Um, you, you, exert, uh, you exert that power. You exert the authority when you realize that you have it. And so Paul, in combating uh, the timidity that Timothy perhaps was uh, encountering in his youth, the, the, the timidity perhaps that he might have been uh, encountering uh, because of the heresies and uh, uh, a lot of the things that were going on uh, around him. Uh, it, it, uh, Paul wanted him to rise above it and not be captured by the culture of what was around him, but to rise up in the gift that God had imparted to him and uh, to exert that. We're encouraged in Romans chapter 12 to be not overcome of evil, but to overcome evil with good. You know, I believe that if there was ever a time that that is so, it is time for it now, for us not to lament uh, the evils that we see around us, but to overcome it with good. And so what will invoke us to do that? I believe it is understanding the power and authority that is invested in us. But power without love uh, will 
not benefit. Power without love may benefit uh, you, but it will not benefit others. Someone has says that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It is only because power without love becomes self-serving, whereas power with love be serves others. Jesus in teaching his disciples, uh, in fact, uh, when two of Jesus' disciples came to him and asked him uh, whether their mother did, asked him, said, uh, when you come into your kingdom, why allow us to be, to sit on my sons, to sit on your right hand and on your left? That, that woman had ambition for her children, didn't she? Uh, she, she, saw, she saw a kingdom future for her children. Mm -hmm. So I ain't hating on them. I'm not hating on them. You need to see and be able to pronounce the destiny over uh, your children, those who God entrusts you with, and whose lives you speak into. We are given that responsibility and authority. More and more, God continues to push me in this direction as I pray. I hear him saying jurisdiction. I hear him saying authority and uh, summonsing us to a place of understanding the jurisdiction and authority that we have been granted and given so that we will exercise it. That uh, absent us, us doing it, there will be a void and evil will prevail. Someone said that evil prevails when good men do nothing. Evil persists when good men do nothing. And so we don't want to be those who are good, but good for nothing. <laughs> uh, good, but good for nothing. Uh, good only in the sense that we ascribe goodness and, and we uh, say we're good and people say, oh, look how good they are. But we want to be good for the kingdom, good for people, good to people. And it's the love that causes us to translate our conferences on authority and power from uh, just a conference, just uh, uh, another meeting to talk about uh, all the authority and power that we have. It is love that takes it and translates it into the practical everyday effect of going out and benefiting others, right? And so uh, it is with intent that he gave us power a spirit of power and, a, and of love. If we had a period of love, if we had love without power, uh, we could feel compassion for people, you know, uh, uh, name them well, but never do them any good. Mm -hmm. So love has compassion and it extends to the benefit of others, but power comes along and bring with its ability and authority and uh, to, be, to be able to actually do good. How? Acts chapter 10, verse 38, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and he had anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. And a result of that, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So we come to this over and over again, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, Jesus, uh, having risen from the dead, appears to his disciples and tells them, all power in heaven and earth is now in my hands. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, I, I, I hear over and over again in this time, uh, uh, a summons and a provocation of the spirit for us to see that and to celebrate the power and authority that Jesus has been given but then to have the handshake of that uh, realization to mobilize us. See, to, to awaken to purpose is to understand our design and to understand what is invested within us, the authority that we have, the gifts that are invested within us, the latent ability and power of the Holy Spirit that is invested within us and in the nature that we have, but the handshake that translate that into effectively being the difference that makes the difference 
and mobilizes us to the mission of God is love, all right? So then uh, power, love, and a sound mind or discernment. The Apostle Paul, I shared with this a couple of times in the last couple of lessons, the Apostle Paul prayed in Philippians chapter one for the believers at Philippi that their love would abound still more and more in knowledge and discernment, that they would approve the things that are excellent. And uh, I believe when it says approve, I, mean, I believe it means to exhort, endorse, and exemplify. To endorse and exemplify. To endorse and exemplify. He says that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent. We don't just agree to excellent things, but as our love abounds more and more, the knowledge and discernment of the love that we have been given and the power that we've given to express that love will give us the discernment to go be a difference, where to take this love and where to apply, all right? And so uh, he, we are to both endorse, exemplify, and personify the love of God. And how do we do it? Very simply, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. If God so loved the world that he would lay his down, that, uh, that he would give his only son, the son would love so, so much that he would lay his life down, then we too ought to, so to, to, to lay our lives down for the brethren. This uh, discernment will cause us to understand our lives and our purpose here in this world. Uh, we talked about the other day um, how that the Apostle Peter in his writings talks about how the earth that we now know uh, will be dissolved. And he asks the question, he says, seeing that all these things shall be, uh, what manner, what type of persons or manner of persons ought we to be? What, what, what manner of people ought we to be? Saying that everything that we see is going to come to an end, we should live with a higher discernment about life and our time and our energy such that we redeem the time. Redeem the time. Redeem the time. Let me begin to, uh, got a few more minutes. Follow me from here in 2 Timothy 1 over to Ephesians chapter number five. Ephesians chapter number five. Amen. So we have a spirit, not of timidity and cringing fear. Uh, we are not, the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 10, that we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but we are those who believe. Amen. So, we, 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 don't, we don't retreat. Uh, we don't look at what's going on around us and retreat. We rather say, I am born of God. I have a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I am born of God. I overcome. And the victory that overcomes the world is, is my faith. All right, and so we live with the sense of the greater one within us. Now, um, this discernment that we are called to,
let, let, let me let me read it uh, because I've got two Bibles here. I'm more familiar with this one. Let's start at the eighth verse and we'll bring it on home and we'll hear, end here in, in Ephesians 5. Now, uh, he is, he, we understand we have a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind or discernment. This is the spirit that is within us. Um, one the writer says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Uh, another place he says, you, O oh Lord, will light my candle. You will enlighten my darkness. And so God lights us and has lit us on the inside by the investment of his spirit on the inside of us. So here it says in verse eight of Ephesians five, for you were once darkness, but now are you are light in the Lord. You are light. You are light. So we're lit and we're given a spirit of power, of love and discernment, and we have been lit in such a way because now we're lit and we are light. We are woke and we're lit to be light. He says, walk as children of light. He says, don't, don't, don't just uh, embrace the, the term, walk it out, walk it out, walk it out, you know. <laughs> walk as children of the light. Walk out what you are. For the spirit, fruit of the spirit is in all, watch it now, goodness, righteousness, and truth. The fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Uh, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove, another translation uh, says, expose them, uh, light them up, give direction. The Bible says of Jesus, uh, the light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended him not. In him was life and his life was the light of men. The light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. When it says comprehended, it doesn't mean it just didn't understand it. It could not uh, resist it. It could not overcome it. Uh, it could not bring it under its control. And so likewise, that's what we're summoned and called to. We are to expose, we are, uh, we are to push back darkness. He says, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, watch it now, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. All right? He says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. And then he says this in verse 5, 15, see then that you walk circumspectly, uh, not as fools, but as wise. Walk circumspectly. Walk with a discernment and full view circumspect, circumference, 360 degree awareness and a view and awareness of things. Uh, uh, you know, what, when we talk about awareness, you know, our look ability, you know, we have peripheral vision. We can see to about, you know, about right there is where I can see. But he says, uh, but then he says, walk circumspectly. Well, how am I to walk circumspectly? I can only see this far. Obviously, I'm to walk with a discernment that's bigger than my limited field of view. Mm -hmm. It is a discernment that is the spirit of God at work in us to give us a view beyond our limited uh, span of view and the limited view of this world, its culture and its system, that we have the view of God. We see things by God's perspective, right? You know, field of view. But that's about right there. I can see 
You know, I can about see it about right there. But I, beyond that, I, I, I don't know what's back there. All right. But this camera has a bigger view. It can see me and it can also see behind me, but it can't see three dimensionally because my head is blocking. But God has a perspective that's bigger than all of what we can see and the tools even that we have at our disposal. The Holy Spirit has a whole nother dimensional view. All right, let's move on and let's bring this to a close. So he says, walk for complexity, not as wise, redeeming the time. Why? Because the days are evil. Redeem the time because the days are evil. He says, walk circumspectly. Walk circumspectly. Have a full view. Be aware of what's going on. Be attentive. Let the Holy Spirit uh, give you uh, a God perspective so that you know what kind of person you ought to be because all of these things are going gonna, to gonna come to an end. We know there'll be a new heaven and earth. It's, it's more than what we see in front of us. And so uh, we don't pine away for heaven and that which is to come, but we have that understanding and that should shape how we live today and how we operate today. And so he says, redeem the time. How do you redeem time? We know you can't purchase time, but you can become more effective. You can become more focused. You can become more proficient. Your productivity can be increased. And so he, he says, walking as children of the light is walking woke. It's being mobilized. It's being courageous. It's being bold. It's, it's allowing the spirit of power that's in you by love and discernment to reach out and affect the culture and the things that are around you and to be able to, to see the needs of, of, that, of those around you uh, and, and, and be an agent of God and a change agent of God. In. All right. And then he says, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So there's wisdom in discerning and knowing the will of God. Unwise, uh, to live unwise is to not understand the will of God. I'm going to talk more about that uh, in, a, in a subsequent lesson. He says, don't be drunk with wine, wherein is excess or dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves, uh, to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. Uh, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another, in the uh, fear or reverence of God. Hey, let me end with this. We are in a time where we must live woke. And I'm not talking about that popular term of the word woke. I'm talking about woke by the Holy Spirit. Woke to God's design for us and our purpose and our God-given uh, investment in who we are and why we're here and uh, God's eternal purpose and design. Hey, I declare to you, you have received Christ. You have a spirit of power. You have a spirit of love. You have a spirit of discernment. Uh, and it is that you would be courageous and bold and exercise the gifts that God has put in you to be the difference that makes the difference in wherever you are today and every day. Hey, we love you. Good to see you tonight. Hey, we look forward to connecting with you again. Catch us every Thursday uh, for these connected uh, on Midweek Online. Until then, remember this. God loves himself from you. Mm -hmm. You too. too. You matter to God. And you, you matter, matter to us. us. Yeah.